could you ignore? The ones that are voiceless scream from the poor. They only hit a score. I do it for the underground kings that don't need more. I'm kicking down your door. If I wonder why you got a pocket full of green for. Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Regiments of Renown. This is a limited series that is dedicated to the building, painting, as well as assembling of our studio's 3000 point Dogs of War army. And as you can see, we've actually made quite a bit of progress on this army thus far. Actually, did quite a bit. It's been kind of a little bit slow going on this army for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm just having a really hard time finding time to sit down and actually paint it. I got a lot of projects going on. I got a lot of irons in the fire. So I think that's one of the problems. I got too much going on right now. I think that's the reason why I'm able to dedicate as much time to paint this army like I usually do, which is actually kind of sad. At the same time, I also traded out some of the miniatures from my Empire army as well in order to flesh out this one. And the reason why is because the miniatures that I have in this army are actually all kinds of different kinds of scales. And so I didn't really care for the way that some of the miniatures, like the War Machines, for example, I didn't care how the uh, scale worked with my Empire army. So I'm going to be trading those out with some 8th edition uh, cannons and Hellblaster volley guns I was able to get on the cheap. I'm going to use that to trade out this army instead. So when I, once I trade out those pieces, I actually have quite a bit of this army done. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly what's been accomplished so far. So first of all, you guys have already seen this army, uh, this unit right over here. This is uh, Perazzo's Lost Legion, which is a regiment of renown. So it's like a special character unit that you can hire from the uh, Dogs of War. It consists of a combination of pikemen and craftsmen. I have my general miniature right over there as well, as well as Gotrin if you like special characters, as well as my level four wizard. So this is what that unit will look like. And you guys have also seen this unit right over here, which is the uh, Renzo Gunners which is a unit of 20 handgunners with uh, different colors of blue for the uniform. It looks really, really cool. At the same time, you guys have already also seen Blitzen as well. Blitzen was the old Hellblaster volley gun that I used to use for my 3000 point Empire Army. However, I'm trading that out for an, a, a different 8th edition miniature, which is a little bit bigger in scale. So I'm gonna paint that up for the Empire Army instead and use this for the Dogs of War. So Blitzen is fully completed. Same thing with Donner which is the great cannon. I'm gonna be using it for one of uh, Br uh, Bronzino's Galloper guns, which is because the cannon is kind of small and kind of like weak looking. So because I got a bigger eighth edition cannon, that I'm gonna use for that Empire Army instead because that way it looks like a great cannon. Well, this is actually like a perfect size to look like a small cannon being toted around by a Clydesdale, for example. So this unit has already been done as well. At the same time, for my more astute viewers, you would recognize this war machine as well. This was a spare flame cannon that I was going to use, a proxy for a flame cannon I was going to use for my uh, Studio 3000 Point Dwarf Army. But it's been sitting there just collecting dust, not doing much of anything. So instead, I'm going to use this as one of the great cannons that we use in this uh, Dogs of War Army. It's crewed by two dwarves as well as a monkey, the Powder Monkey. <laughs> so uh, we'll be using that one for the great cannon as well as for the Revolt for this army as well. And then of course I got my Bronzino's Galloper guns from my other artillery pieces. So that's what I've done up to this point. Now the new additions that we've done of course are these two huge horses right here. These two horses are actually quite large. If you look at them compared to what these guys are riding. The reason why is because these are supposed to be like Clydesdale, like draft horses that, uh, that Bronzino's Galloper guns uses in order to drag the guns around at such a quick pace. These are actually Reaper miniatures uh, from their bones lines. These guys are actually unicorn miniatures. I just clipped off the horn real quick to make it look like a giant Clydesdale. That way it looks like it's big enough to drag this smaller cannon. I got a second Battlemasters cannon I'm going to use, as well as some crew members for that, to be the proxy for the second Galloper gun for this second horse over here. So these two horses are brand new to the army. Uh, I've got those recently completed. At the same time, back here, this unit took a while to do, but this unit here is called Lucini Rifles. It is a unit of 20 handgunners that I'll be using for my Dogs of War army. And as you can see, we got this really cool magenta, cream, white, and black color scheme going on for this team as well. So let's talk about this guy's a little bit more in detail. So this color scheme, the reason why I use this color scheme so much is because I, when I got done painting up the um, Bogdanov and Barons, which is the Imperial Nobles team for Blood Bowl, I really like that color scheme. The, the combination of black, cream, and magenta with brown leather looked really, really cool. As well as when you combine it with some like copper and like bronze elements for the armor and stuff. So I thought it looked really, really neat. So I decided to actually use that same kind of paint scheme for this unit, which is Lucini Rifles. 
So that way they can look very, very unique. And once again, I'm kind of doing like this individualized paint job for each of the miniatures. So that way they're all just a little bit different. I mean, the uniformity is there in the sense that they all have the same kind of color scheme. But that's really about it. Which also makes sense too, because historically speaking, uh, uniforms were not actually a thing back during the Renaissance. I mean, they would wear like same, similar colors in order to group themselves into units and stuff, but a standard uniform wasn't really around during that time period. So that's what I wanted to kind of go with to create that. And then I got this idea from when I was working on the Bretonian army, uh, that having that individualized paint job looked really, really cool, especially when you put it in mass with a whole regiment like this. It looks really, really amazing with that different individualized color scheme. Adds a lot of variety to the unit. and makes it look very, very visually very interesting. And so I decided to do that with this unit as well. As you can see, I use green as an accent color for the sashes crossing their chests, as well as the feathers, because it's a nice complementary color, uh, contrasting color to pink. So I looked really, really cool. And it just blends in really nicely with the rest of this army as well. So as you guys are fully aware, I'm a big fan of bright, bold colors. And there's only very few armies in Warhammer Fantasy that lets you to experiment with such a vibrant color palette. Um, they're mainly human armies, so like Empire, for example, is a perfect example of bright colored armies. The same thing with Bretonians. Bretonians are definitely beautifully done when you do them correctly. And so Dogs of War, of course, can also be that way as well. So it's kind of neat because like every unit has like its own little uniform color. So like Lucini's rifle, for example, Lucini rifles have like a pink kind of color scheme. My artillery guys will have yellow and black. Uh, for my pikemen, these guys would be green and brown primarily. For my other unit of gunmen, is like teals and blues, for example. For these crew members, it's cream as well as teal for these guys. So it's looking really, really neat, and I really like the way that these individual color schemes are kind of working out in the army. Now, another unit that's also brand new, of course, is my units of five Stratiotes. Stratiotes are basically just light cavalry guys, all they are. Now these miniatures should look familiar to you because they are very similar, exactly the same exact same sculpts that I use for my yeoman for our Sidious 3000 point Bretonian army. These are actually light cavalry miniatures from the game Pike and Shot by Warlord Games. I was able to get a box set, I think it's called a Battalia, I think is what it was called, or, or parts of a Battalia anyways. This guy at my local game store, they used to have actually a pretty large Pike and Shot group until they uh, fell apart. And so this guy was trying to offload some of his unpainted miniatures, so I was able to get these guys as well as a lot of the pikemen that you guys see in this Dogs of War army. And the reason why is because I actually used those pikemen and stuff and handgunners for my Empire army originally. But since I had so many leftovers, I was able to get these light cavalry guys for the uh, Bretonians for the Yeoman, and now I have a unit of five Stratiotes as well. So I decided to go with an orange color scheme for these guys, just because, like I said, I'm a huge fan of bright, vibrant colors, so I figured why not. They're very, very eye-catching. Um, I decided to kind of make these guys very uniform. Um, the reason why is because I did try experimenting with doing individual paint jobs for the Yeoman, for the Bretonian Army, and it, it didn't look right. I think it's because there's not that many miniatures in a unit like this, only five guys. So having them be mixed matched in their color scheme did not look good whatsoever. Whereas like a huge unit like this of 50 people or 20 people, for example, it actually looks really good. But for a unit of five, it didn't look so good. So because of that, I kind of kept the same uniform. These guys are wearing orange uh, overcoats. They also have a teal color uh, crossing their chest as well. However, I did do individualized paint jobs for their horses, however. So because of that, because horses looking different colored and stuff looks perfectly fine, just because that's what horses look like in real life. So I was able to get away with that. But for the uniform, though, everything had to be uniform for the most part. I did add some color variation with the hats. Like some of these guys have brown hats. Some of them have like black hats, for example. But everything else, though, is pretty much similar and pretty much on point. This unit was actually really fun to paint. I'm really, really glad with the end result for these guys because they look really ace with these bright orange and the and the teal across in their chest. So it looks really, really awesome. And I really like the way they came out. These guys are also carrying pistols as well because, you know, they're supposed to be straight out. It's a little like Light Calvary, for example. And that kind of fits right in with this whole Renaissance era, Renaissance Italy theme that these guys are all rocking. So I like that a lot. So it looks really cool. The nice thing about this army too is if I want to, I can actually combine it with my Empire Army, for my studio's Empire Army, and actually make a 6,000 point Empire Army if you wanted to. So, for example, we hit one of our milestones for battle reports, we might, we might do a mega battle report with humans like uh, Empire versus uh, versus Orcs and Goblins maybe. Because then I could buy my other 3,000 point Bretonians and make it a 9,000 point human army, which would be kind of cool. So, I don't know, just something to think about in the end. And probably the biggest addition to this army, of course, is over here. This huge unit of ethereal looking undead. This is another regiment renown known as the Cursed Company. 
It is a Mongasa huge army of, what is it, 18, 20, 50 skeleton warriors? That's what it is. In a column formation. So these guys look really, really awesome. And I'm really happy with the way I did the paint job on these guys. So as you can see, I did an ethereal paint job with these guys. And they look awesome. So the ethereal paint job on this was actually inspired by the ethereal paint job I did on my Vampire Counts army. And so this time around though was very easy. The problem with my Vampire Counts army is that I actually use a lot of oil wash on the ethereal colors that I did. So it ended up being kind of muted looking for my Hex Race, for example, for my Black Knights. So I didn't like the way that came out. However, though, I cracked the code with the ethereal paint job when I worked on the Dire Wolves for our Studio 3000 Point uh, Vampire Counts army during the pandemic. And that's why I was able to find a paint scheme that really worked in order to do that. Uh, basically, I just used a system known as um, glazing is what I did. So that's basically you take down water, water down paint and you apply layer upon layer like a wash to slowly build up this kind of glowing ethereal effect with the white undercoat underneath it. So that's why it looks so glowing with like the greens and the blues. It looks extremely vibrant and it looks very day glowy looking and very neon like. And that was the point I was trying to do with this unit as well. At the same time, I also decided to kind of go with this, what I like to call graveyard steel is what I like to call it. What I do is I take a 50-50 mixture of gunmetal gray by folk art, as well as copper by folk art, make a 50-50 mix, and then I paint the weapons to make it look like it's aged rusted steel. I want to make it look like, like these ghosts and undead spirits were to go up and pick up some random armor shields as well as some weapons off the battlefield, and they're now using it to kill people in open combat. And so that's the look I wanted to go with these guys as well. With some accent pieces, primarily for Richter Kruger, which is the leader of this unit. He's a special character that every single time he kills someone, um, a member joins up with the Black Company, uh, joins up with the Cursed Company. I also use some gold accent for the Standard Bearer as well as for the musician as well. But everybody else is pretty much color, uh, is pretty much monochrome with the green and the blue ethereal look. And then to get that rusted look on the metal, what I did is I took some um, Burnt Umber by Folk Art, uh, sorry, by uh, Apple Barrel. And I made it into a homemade wash with adding water to it and put it on the steel to make it look like it's rusted. And it looks really, really cool. So the Cursed Company is a perfect target unit because every single time you kill somebody in the Cursed Company, you take that energy and you add it to the ranks of the Cursed Company as well. So this unit could actually grow Mongaso huge if you get some good rolls for that unit. So this is another Riddler now, another special character unit that we actually have from the army. And so I'm really happy with the way that that came out as well. It looks really, really sweet really really vibrant and colorful and it actually pairs very well with the rest of the army actually as well so it looks like it just fits right in with the dogs of war so this is the progress i've made so far on the dogs of war army so now that we're done talking about the progress i've made let's go ahead and pause the video and talk about what the next step is for this army's development all right, so now we're back at my paint table, and now let's talk about the rest of the army that needs to be done. Actually, not very much needs to be done on this army. It's almost completed, actually, which is really, really cool. So, first of all, on the right-hand side, as you can see, I got Bronzino. Bronzino is a custom-made miniature. Um, I just converted him from Kit Bastion, basically, for my Battlemaster's horse, as well as a spare Imperial Noble, I think is what that miniature is from. So that way, he could be Bronzino. So I painted his armor bronze, because, you know, Bronzino, bronze, go figure. So he's a special character who's in commander of the Galloper guns. At the same time, I also have Goldfag Maneater. I've actually painted that guy up for my Ogre Kingdom's army, but I'd actually never use him for my Ogre Kingdom's army. But I plan on using him and his Man Eaters in this Dogs of War army. So this would be another regiment of renown. So you can see here's a couple, there's a combination of some kit bashed um, Ogre War uh, Ogrens, Ogre Bulls, with a Battle Masters Ogre in the back, as well as some Reaper miniatures in the back rank as well, to create this really cool looking, you know, one of a kind. Uh, man eater army i also like the fact that i also got two female giantesses to be female ogres in this army so it looked really cool as well so gold flag man eater is pretty much painted all i gotta do is change his base to the green base and then finish up painting up the rest of these guys and then i can use it for my army as well and another guy i also have here is the ogre paymaster as well and the reason why is because i'm using him to proxy the pay cart for uh midas the mean which is a Special character who's a paymaster for the army as well. This is going to be this ogre. This ogre paymaster is going to be the proxy for the cart that the paymaster's uh, chest comes with, which kind of makes sense, right? I can imagine an ogre carrying around the pay chests for a mercenary army and being, you know, used to protect it. This guy here with the scroll in the front is going to be my Midas the Mean character. He's actually an alchemist character from Talisman, which is an old, old, old Hero Quest style game that Games Workshop used to make back in the day. 
So I got that guy, so he'll be my Midas the Mean. And the rest of these guys, of course, are free company militia dot guys that used to come from the old 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy. Now, if these guys look familiar to you, they should. And the reason why is because these guys used to be my Marienburg mercenaries from uh, our campaigns of Mordheim. So these guys are painted up in blue and gold, and uh, blue and yellow and teal and gold to make, uh, to make them look like they're from Marienburg. So that's the same color scheme I'm going to use for my uh, Paymaster's Bodyguards. These guys are going to be the Paymaster's Bodyguard in combination with that as the pay card as well. And in fact, it's going to be a unit of 30, and that's going to take us these guys up here in the front. So these guys right here are all that I have to paint up in order to complete that unit. So it's not very many guys. I have a Empire Captain character in the front, as well as the rest of these Fleet Militia guys. So I'm going to paint them up in the similar color scheme of blue and yellow that I did for my Marienburg Mercenaries to make them look really, really awesome. And then from there, that unit will be fully completed. And then, of course, we have some more machines. So as you can see here, I got some 8th edition cannon. I also have an 8th edition uh, Hellblaster volley gun. And then I have a Battlemaster's cannon. Now, this second Battlemaster's cannon is going to be the second Galloper gun. That's going to be in the Bronzino's Galloper guns. So I do have to work on that. Now, I do have to paint up these two war machines. Not necessarily because I'm going to put them in my dog's war army, uh, because I'm going to put these in the Empire army. If you guys remember, I took the cannon from my Empire army, as well as the Hellblaster Volley Gun from my Empire army, and I'm going to replace them with these larger scale 8th edition ones to make them look more impressive. Because after all, this looks like a great cannon as opposed to that. That doesn't look like a great cannon. It looks kind of shrimpy compared to that. So that's the reason why. So that's going to be the great cannon from the Empire Army. That's going to be the new Donner. And this uh, Hellblaster Fall again looks much more impressive. That's going to be Blitzen. So these two guys will not be part of the Dogs of War Army. They'll be going back to my Empire Army instead. So I do have to paint them to replace the ones I took from my Empire Army. But other than that, that is all I really have left. I don't have very much to do at all left to complete my 3,000 point Dogs of War Army. So I'm really looking forward to getting that done. The only problem that I've been having is finding time to paint, really. Um, I've been having a lot going on in my real life, outside of YouTube. Just a lot of crazy things going on with my friends as well as my family. It's also the same reason why I haven't been uploading any battle reports as of late besides the uh, Into Darkness, which is my solo play uh, Space Station Zero campaign. If you guys are wondering why there's no battle reports, that's the reason why. It's just my friends and family have a lot going on right now. Uh, one of our fan, fan members, for example, one of my friends, for example, is getting his knee replaced. He's going through knee replacement surgery, so he's going to be out for a couple of months, so he can't play. At the same time, I also got some relatives who are also in the army. They're going out to the field, and they're doing different things, doing things with their job. So they're going to be unavailable for a couple of weeks, up to months at a time. Um, at the same time, a couple of my friends got laid off from their previous jobs, so now they're looking for new work. So until we get their schedule down... Um, it's going to be kind of hard to get games in. So that's the reason why there's a lack of battle report, you guys. So I do apologize for that. Um, I'm not like mini wargaming where I actually have guests come over to play. So I don't have anything like that. I don't go to the local game shop to play. It's just me and my buddies is pretty much what it is. And there's a lot of craziness going on right now with our uh, gaming group. It's just, you know, life. Life gets in the way. And, uh, you know, they got to take care of that. And that's perfectly fine. Same thing with me. I got things going on, too. I've just been so busy but just life and work and everything that it's just been kind of hard to get back into, uh, you know, the hobby and stuff. And I've noticed, I noticed a change as well. Like, like when it comes to painting miniatures, like a lot of people like to use it cause it's fun. I like it because it's kind of like therapeutic for me as well. You know, I can just kind of decompress, kind of Zen out, Zen meditate and just focus on the task painting. It helps me to, you know, decompress and relax and stuff. But I just haven't had the chance to do it very much. And I could tell that the stress is starting to get to me now because I haven't been able to go back and do this too much. So I definitely got to go back and make some time to make this happen. So sorry about going on my little rant there, you guys, and my little tangent. But that's what's going on. So if you're wondering why the scheduling has been kind of weird with battle reports and, and things, um, that's why. It's just a lot of things going on right now. So now hopefully, hopefully things will improve by winter. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. But yeah, so this is the next part I got to work on for our Dogs of War Army. All right, you guys. So there you have it. This is the progress we've made so far on our 3,000 point Dogs of War Army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle 8th Edition. Um, slow going progress, but slowly getting it done. And it's starting to look really, really impressive. I'm really loving the way this is turning out. I'm liking the way the units are evolving and how the color schemes are working for the army. And I'm just really loving the progress I'm being made so far. And I can't wait to see the end results. That way I can start using these on, on, the, on the tabletop. Um, that's assuming if I can get games in. Because uh, my friends, man, they're just, it's just, things are just going for a left turn for a lot of people in my life right now. So... And I feel really bad for them because of all the stress and stuff that they're dealing with. 
the other things they got to put up with as well. So, you know, I'll hearts and prayers to those guys, man. It's just, it's hard. But yeah, that's good to do it for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do it for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.